Mr Speaker. Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, let's talk about one year on. Let's talk about one year on. One year on, what are we looking at? One year on, in an eight, year, in eight years of governments, we're seeing headlines like this on the paper today. And New Zealand First wants to start by congratulating the people of the Hawke's Bay, congratulating them for kicking into touch this government's ludicrous amalgamation plans, and for sending a loud and clear message to the local government commission that they didn't want a bar of their flawed plans. And it's interesting because we asked this question in the House earlier on this year, last year, and the minister said, in response to a question I put, that people in the wider upper and people in the Wellington area didn't want to have a bar of the super, plan, super city plans, she said, not everyone agrees with that, Bimba. Well, it would appear that the vast, overwhelming majority of people who live in Northland, who live in the Hawke's Bay and who live in Wellington and the wider upper do agree with New Zealand First. And in fact, it's the other way around. New Zealand First agrees with them. And New Zealand First is still standing up for people and listening to the people of New Zealand. And that's why we're in touch with what's going on. And that's why we predicted three strikes and you'd be out, National. And, and it's really interesting because one of the people who's had written a great deal, get a copy of this, makes wonderful reading, is a former ACT MP, a former National Party candidate and actually, I think, still a National Party member, Stephen Franks. And this dissertation on the flaws and the fundamental buffoonery and incompetence of the LGC really is worth the read. And I recommend, a, I recommend to the Chief Whip of the National Party, get a hold of Stephen Franks' document, have a read, and learn some lessons as to why these amalgamation projects have been booted into touch. Congratulations to them. And what else do we see? We see an all-out attack on the New Zealand flag and even worse than that, on national nationalism and in pursuit of what? This government's underlying desire to become a republic. This government wants to disconnect the Union Jack from the flag, disconnect this country from the monarchy and lead us into republicanism. And the only thing that New Zealand First is... We actually understand the National Party where it's come from. We know that they got rid of some pure nationalists in their party, you know, good people like Shane Ardern, Colin King and a few others in Port Chester Burrows. He's on his way out soon, we know that, because of this government's drive towards republicanism. But we don't understand the Labour Party, who seem to be quite befuddled and bemuddled about wanting to change the flag but not wanting to change the flag, and now wanting to promote this thing. This thing. They call it the peak flag. And we've got the ACT Party and everybody else in behind it. It actually belongs to an engineering and design company in the United States. How the heck people are going to get over the copyright and, tra copyright and trademark into that, well, someone's yet to explain to us. But New Zealand First stands firmly firmly on the side of the nationalism, on the side of this flag, on the connection to the Crown, on the monarchy, and we will not de de deviate from that, not one inch. What we will say to this government is listen up to the people in New Zealand. Listen up to them, because overwhelmingly they don't want this government's referendum. If there should have been one re uh, any referendum, it should have been do you want a flag change, yes or no? And the government would have got a resounding no, and we could have moved on and saved millions and millions and millions of dollars. And by the way, New Zealand First is still waiting for this government to give the full costs of a flag change. Because no one has talked yet about the coat of arms. We know the coat of arms at the Supreme Court cost $30,000. We'll start thinking medals, documents, badges, parapets of buildings, windi windows of the Reserve Bank and all the other ministries, all over the country and all over the world. What is the full cost of a flag change, National? Because once that figure is made clear to the public in New Zealand, they will reject that referendum, just as the Hawke's Bay rejected the super city proposal from this government and its lackeys, the LGC. Thank you, Mr Speaker.